just got kind of a way of its own, you know, and his own way he was perfection. No. I, I was present when Murphy went up to Jack and kind of apologized for, you know, I, I was only following orders. <laughs> Jack, was, Jack didn't hold it against Murphy at all. He thought, you know, Murphy's a professional. I always thought that if you had just inked that book from scratch, everything would have been fine. It was, it was the, the, the two different styles of the page, which just didn't work. Or if Wally, Wally Wood had wanted to, Wally Wood wanted to make that book, if he did that book, it would have been, would have been fine. Dave? Yeah, um, during the late 60s was the beginning of the change of DC Comics, when they started firing a lot of the classic artists, and, you know, like George Pat, Wayne Morning, yeah. Jim Mooney, the list went on. Murphy was there. Yeah. What was the what was the reaction at that time period? Remember it? You all hear the question? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, when when Carmine took over as editorial director at, at DC, um, he was given a mandate to try and start changing the look of the books. And this is a this is a period when an awful lot of editors left, like George Cashton and Robert Kaniger and other people stopped editing. And a lot of artists went out, and, and it was, I think, one day when, when they got rid of George Papp, George Klein, Jim Mooney, and Wayne Boring on the Superman books like in one week. And a lot of people were very scared that, that they were going to be next. Um, so what was the mood? Well, you, you, you I, worked for, I, worked, I worked with Julian. Uh, he, you know, he just loaned me out from time to time when somebody had a, had a, need, a need for it. I mean, uh, do a cover one in the afternoon, or maybe Kurt Swan would bring something in. This has happened a couple of times. Uh, and Mort Weissinger had no one ready to ink it. It was really hot, you know, they had to have it out. And Julie was going to give me, you know, to lend me to Mort for, for that one job, that kind of thing. But uh, Mort... Uh, How'd you get along with Mort? I, I had no problems with it. Not really, but... Uh, No, I mean, in all seriousness, I, I, I always liked his stuff. You know, I liked his, his editing and uh, stuff he did pre-comics. Uh, and I knew his work from the pulp. From standard magazine. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? I wonder if you and uh, Dick Giordano ever talked about inking or drawing. Did you and Dick uh, Giordano ever sit and talk shop about inking? Oh, yeah, I, I'm sure we did. Because we worked in anything together. Did you, uh, um, did you ever look at, uh, uh, Wally Wood told me, he once looked at Joe Sutter's inking and he looked at, oh, that's how I should have inked Jack. Did you ever look at somebody else inking and go, oh, that's how I should have, what I should have done with Sutter? Uh, did, did you learn anything while they're looking at other inkers ever? Did you ever have a, did that ever make you self-critical? Well, I, I'm not sure. I never really tried to do anything. Except that it was in the Foster or, or Raymond Camp, I would have been trying to you know, pick up stuff from those guys. But other than that, no. Will Fine is an exception, and Will to an extent. Yeah. Let's talk about Will a little bit. Now, you worked for Will on PS Magazine, right. and then you took over PS Magazine right. afterwards. And uh, did he do, when he was doing PS Magazine, he did an awful lot of the grunt work himself, oh, yeah. stuff out, <clears throat> and sitting there. Sure. Doing mechanical stuff, he didn't delegate that. Uh, he, he was a very hard worker. Oh yeah, yeah fantastic. Was there ever a sense? I mean, that book was kind of—it's not even micromanaged. It was micro micromanaged. You <laughs> had, had such so much oh, approvals. Yeah. I don't understand how someone like you or him can, can can work under. I mean, obviously the money was fine for whatever you. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. or you know, you could do. Do you all know what PS Magazine was? This was a magazine done for the army. Still it, was, it was still it's done. It was a government contract. You went and bid for it, and it was a magazine that came out that had taught you how to keep your gun clean, yeah. how to disassemble that, and then it had these little, most timid pinup art in the center of Connie. Yeah. 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 yeah, and and did, did you get, did you get when you did it? Did, you, did they say, oh Connie's looking too sexy or Connie's got to look? Did you get the input on that? The Jim Kidd, the editor, <coughs> for a while was. Go down to Fort Knox for a review of the I had sent them to Sunny, which is the pencil layout of the whole thing with all the type matter set in that place. Uh, and then after they had a week at it, uh, the contractor had to 
come down to Kentucky and uh, uh, get the word straight from them. I mean, they, they would have let someone else come on under duress, but uh, uh, usually there's a will or a self or something that would have to go down there. Who else worked on those? Uh, Mike Plume worked with you on some of them? No, not Mike came after. Frank Sheramonti? Yeah, Frank Sheramonti worked for us. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan Zola? Zola, okay. Chuck Kramer, did he work on those with you? Or? No, no, he worked right before. So he and Dan Zola, which had the contract. I had a three year old. Chuck had it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Chuck Kramer and, uh, and Dan. But when you worked with Will on it, that was it. You know. What did what did he do? And what did you do? Roughly, I mean, obviously he did everything. But he stepped, he, he gave you. What did well, he give you to do? He would uh, usually say, "Man, well, just leave the faces on this one." That, that kind of thing. Did you do all? Did you do a lot of technical illustration there? No, I didn't do practically none. I accepted the head art. Okay. And Ben Oda lettered right, the man. books, and Ben was always on time for okay. every single thing. Uh, he would come from Manhattan down to Central Jersey with my work and insist on doing it. We were, we were living, we were living in, uh, down in uh, uh, Somerset County. The client did a job for Ben. He'd be up all night lettering and stuff because it was always late. Not late, but I mean, a very short deadline on it. And he would uh, insist on bringing it down. I had finally talked him into meeting at, at the New York airport a few times, but that was who, who lettered your Buck Rogers strips? Um, I did most of them. Really you lettered them? Yeah, not, not the first go around. Uh, when I worked for Dewey to write those in the 40s, and they called me back in 58 or so. Then, uh, you were taking over George Test? No, no, oh. George. George followed. George followed you, all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, Rick Hughes was the guy that's uh, Yes. When you worked for Fiction House or Buck Rogers for Toby Publications, did you ink your own work or did somebody oh, else ink it? I never had anything to do with Toby. You did? No, they, they picked that up. I don't know where they got it or got the right to walk it to. No, it was uh, strictly something I had to do. I didn't even know it was being done until it, you know, sometime later. Was there ever at DC or any company you worked for a strip that somebody else was doing and you said, gee, I wish I was doing that one? That was, oh, I loved, I always wanted that character, I wanted to touch that thing. Or a kind of work that you ever wish that DC would stick you out a different kind of book? Sort of no, I don't think you're asking me that as long as it had a science fiction element, that was satisfying. But I, when they were doing, um, when DC did the shadow, did you ever say, gee, I wish I could draw the shadow or I think. Yes, sir. Back when, uh, when Siegel and Schuster were trying to get additional compensation out of DC, how did you feel about that at the time? Well, how did you feel about Siegel and Schuster? Oh, I was very happy that uh, that, that happened, you know. And I think Jay Emmett was a good guy that made it possible. He was, you know, stayed kind of in the background. but. Uh, it, well, I don't think it would have happened without you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I did you ever read the uh, novel Cavalier and Play? And I was just wondering how Cavalier. Did you ever read Cavalier and Play the book? Yeah. No, I'm wondering how accurate that is about the common. I don't know that. It's is it recent? Somewhat. It's a novel from about ten years ago, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's fairly accurate in its depiction of the industry. Well, DC is still very good about uh, giving me copies of them like they always did. You know. yeah, this is a book that's been a hardcover book, a separate novel. But uh, uh, how do you feel like that now when you see your work reprinted better? You know, better paper stock, better better coloring and sometimes. Uh, are you proud that it, that it is preserved, that, that now people are paying, you know, forty nine ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> When you did them, they sold for a dime. Do you, you wish you say, look at them and go, gee, I wish I'd take that. Oh, I got a, here's I got a question. Rusty yeah. does cover recreations. And Russ, when he, when he, when he asks them to do a cover recreation, he asks them when they're, when they're, when they're hot conditioning him, they, he says, do you want an exact recreation or can I fix it? <laughs> and, he and if they say fix it, he changes things, he looks back, 
and he changes all blaze the raise the horizon and alternative degree. Mistakes he now sees or things that the layout that he was given dictated. If you were doing a cover recreation now, would you and you had free reign, would you change things? Would you go back and go, Oh, I wish I'd done that differently or, or yeah, that's hard to say. That, that's no, no longer that creative you know, if you're doing it again. And uh, the temptation is just to go ahead and do it uh, without trying to make changes. Other question? Yes? Um, you and Joe Hubert seem to have very different ideas about how to draw Hawkman's mask. Have you ever talked with him about it? Well, actually, I, uh, at the point I took it over, I tried to do it more or less until we do it. But I think he's changed it quite a bit over, uh, over the years. We're, we're going to discuss this on the 4 o'clock panel. <laughs> 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 yes, anybody else? Dave? Um, well, I'm sorry, um, I was just thinking, um, you know Murphy for a long time, and uh, one of my great thrills was to introduce Murphy to Joe Schuster at the San Diego Pond. He's yeah. one of my fun members. This is Dave Siegel, who, who has done an awful lot to, to find professionals who are out of the limelight to drag. He's the guy who dragged Chuck Quidera to San Diego one year and got and found uh, Fred Gardiner and the Dave. Dave calls me every so often and goes, I found another one. Okay. And very, very proud. He gets into San Diego, and a lot of those people got not only you know, ink pot awards and standing ovations because of Dave, but royalty payments from DC Comics in their retirement um, because of Dave. Oh. Well, I'd like to say uh, Mark, Mark Anderson was part did something very nice for me, which I always be grateful. What a great privilege I have is to go up to DC Comics. And uh, going up to DC Comics, I figured I'd like to do something a little bit different than most other people did. I got on the phone, and I brought up such people as I called Murphy, Joe Giella, Arnold Drake, Stanley's brother, Larry Lieber, and, and a very rare, a very rare person who regrettably could never made it to San Diego Comic. His name was Hal Sherman, the co-creator of the Star Spangled Kid in Stripe Seat. Came with me up to DC. And it was a dream. Right. Thank, Thank you. Well, we are out of time here. Uh, I I love doing this. We're gonna I'm gonna be interviewing Joe Kubert and Adam Kubert at four. I'm gonna I've asked Murphy to come by that because I want I, I want to discuss something, it's not, and not exactly who did better hawk marrying like that. I gotta, I've got something odd to discuss about this. We're going we're gonna to do that. But would you join me in thanking, not only for this hour, but for an entire career of wonderful work, Mr. Murphy Anderson.